How's it going guys? 3.47 a.m. Saturday, January 21st here in Japan. Past level vignette with a medium difficulty answer choice set, okay? Not going to be a lengthy clip. I'll tell you exactly what you need to know the high yield points, not waste your time. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. Really appreciate it. Give the video a like, really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram, melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L, man underscore medical, links down below. Find me on Telegram, the links to the Telegram group and channel are down below. Now start the clip. 27-year-old woman, six-month history, abnormal periods, BMI 30. Physical exam shows mild acne of the face and shoulders. Question wants to know the combination of findings to be seen in this patient. We have GLUT4 expression, glucokinase activity, endometrial cell growth. Now, I said that this is a passable vignette. We're not trying to make this complicated, okay? OBGYN vignettes, 2CK, big massive fucking paragraph here. I'm just saying you've got a female who's high BMI with hirsutism and abnormal periods. Okay, that's going to be anovulation, polycystic ovarian syndrome. So this is what you need to know, okay? Anya Samili, if you get an overweight female with abnormal periods, especially with the hirsutism, this is a process called anovulation. Now, the starting point is you say high BMI means insulin resistance. And for whatever fucking reason, insulin resistance causes abnormal GnRH pulsation, which is going to lead to an up arrow for luteinizing hormone, down arrow for FSH independently. So this is an Increased LH to FSH ratio is how we call it. It'd be a long fucking discussion about every little point of the mechanism, staying consolidated here. LH normally acts on the theca interna cells of the ovaries to make androgens. So LH is high, as I just said. So that's why we have hirsutism. FSH is low. Well, what does FSH stand for? Follicle stimulating hormone. So that means our follicle stimulation will be decreased and our follicles will not be developed in time for ovulation. By the time LH triggers ovulation, follow, the graphene follicle will not be created. It will not rupture. We are not going to get a corpus luteum. Corpus luteum is the graphene follicle remnant, and corpus luteum secretes progesterone normally. Well, we're not going to get that here, are we? I said that this is called anovulation. Anovulation is a broad term that refers to this scenario where you have high BMI with abnormal periods. When it's severe enough where we get hirsutism on top of it, and we have to do an ultrasound that shows 11 cysts bilaterally, we just call the anovulation PCOS, okay? It's the same thing, though, for all intents and purposes. So in these women, they're not ovulating. They're not getting a corpus luteum. They're not secreting progesterone. So progesterone normally limits the growth of endometrium. Estrogen normally stimulates the growth of endometrium. So we have what's called unopposed estrogen. That's an important phrase. So that's going to cause endometrial hyperplasia. So we have an up arrow for endometrial cell growth here. Endometrial hyperplasia, very important. And over time, this can increase the risk for endometrial cancer. Long discussion. Okay, they give you overweight woman who's 55 and she's got, she had menopause three years ago. She has vaginal bleeding. Okay, they say she's overweight, and you just have to assume that means she's had history of insulin resistance with anovulation, and that's her risk factor for endometrial carcinoma, and you're going to do an endometrial biopsy, okay? So that being said, insulin resistance in this case, well, we know that insulin is going to normally upregulate GLUT4 expression on adipocytes and skeletal muscle. So if we have insulin resistance, we would expect decreased GLUT4 expression. Okay, so there's hyperinsulinemia here. I should be clear about that. Sounds obvious, but they'll ask that as well. Give you the same fucking two-liner, and they'll just say, what's most likely to be seen in this patient? Answer is just hyperinsulinemia. And I've seen students flummoxed over that. So we have insulin resistance, decreased insulin effect. Therefore, GLUT4 expression is decreased in adipocytes and skeletal muscle. And you say, what's going on with glucokinase? No fucking idea. Okay, well, you can be aware that for the first enzyme in glycolysis, glucose to G6P, we have hexokinase ubiquitously. We have glucokinase in the liver. So glucokinase is stimulated by insulin. It's a long discussion. Don't want to go down that route right now. All you need to know is glucokinase in the liver, first enzyme in glycolysis, stimulated by insulin. Okay, well, if we have insulin resistance, then isn't glucokinase activity going to be decreased? Fine. So we said decreased GLUT4 expression. We said we, we now say decreased glucokinase activity. And we have increased endometrial cell growth with endometrial hyperplasia and risk of endometrial cancer later. Okay, so this PCOS stuff, this anovulation stuff, exceedingly high yield for 
repro for step one, for OBGYN for 2CK. Made loads of questions on this stuff. If you check my OBGYN repro playlist here on the YouTube, and I'll also link the High Yield Arrows PDF where I talk about this stuff and the repro OBGYN PDF in the pinned comments below. You know the deal. I'm going to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.